I'd like to show you a neat thing I made. Um, I've got this Raquel Dana 1992 uh, frequency counter. I've done a video or two about that before. Um, and it's got the ovenized high stability fancy oscillator option in it. Uh, but I thought maybe it was pretty far out of adjustment and it turned out it was. Um, I had seen a video by W2AEW that I'll put a link to uh, where he showed how you could adjust or check um, an oscillator like this. I think his was in a frequency counter as well uh, to match the signal broadcast by WWV using a single sideband uh, receiver. WWV is a broadcast station operated by the National Institute uh, for Standards and Technology and it's broadcast out of Colorado. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff about it. I'll put a link to the Wikipedia article, but the important thing for this project is that the carrier frequency is very accurate. Um, now, in my part of the world, I receive WWV very well. I imagine there's uh, something similar uh, in other places, but I don't really know. I'd be interested to find out, though, so if you know, uh, or if you can tell me what you got in your part of the world, uh, let me know in the comments. Anyway, the procedure that W2AEW shows is to take a single sideband receiver and you tune it to the 10 megahertz uh, signal broadcast by WWV, but you tune just off to the side of it, maybe a few hundred hertz, uh, so that you can hear the carrier as a tone. It's, it's an AM station, so you'll hear the carrier as a tone if you tune away from it a little. And then you take and couple the signal from the oscillator you want to check into the receiver as well. In this case, a couple, you just drape a wire over the receiver, you know. It's just very loosely coupled. There's, you don't need a fancy piece of gear or anything. So then you can hear both tones uh, in the receiver. And you take a, you know, swizzle stick, get your tongue at the right angle, and you adjust the oscillator if you want to adjust it. Um, until you zero beat the two tones and then you know it, it matches. So I followed that procedure with what I thought were good results. Um, but I wasn't too sure what I was hearing by ear because I hadn't done it before. Uh, but mostly I thought it'd be cool to make a video uh, showing the two signals on a scope. Um, Dave, the EEV blog guy, he did a video like that uh, where he adjusted the oscillator in his frequency counter to match a uh, rubidium standard he has in his lab try and find a link to that too. Of course, I can't just take an antenna and plug it into the scope. I mean, I could, but it's not going to work. Um, and a heterodyne receiver is not what's called for here. Uh, what I want is a really narrow filter at 10 megahertz and lots of gain so I can see the signal on the scope because coming in from the antenna, it's, you know, it's too small. You're not going to see it. Um, so both of those requirements, lots of gain at 10 megahertz and a really narrow filter, uh, you know, talking about the fractional bandwidth, so you're talking a, f a few kilohertz at 10 megahertz, that's a narrow filter. Um, between those two, it made an interesting project. Not hard, but interesting, and so I do a video about it. I'll give you a quick run through the schematic, and then we'll take a look at it as built. Let me zoom in here, and we'll start at the antenna port and work our way through. Right. So there's a coupled resonator filter here. This acts as a pre-selector to narrow things down to the band of interest before any amplification. These are the resonators in shunt here and here. And they're coupled with this capacitance in series here. So some people call this a double-tuned filter because it has two tuned resonators. Next there's a little cascode gain stage here. But Really, it's to match uh, impedance between the, the terminating impedance of this filter and the terminating impedance of this filter we'll get to in a second. Um, and to provide isolation between the pre-selector filter and the crystal filter. So the, ca the cascode arrangement's nice because you can get a lot of gain out of it. Um, the trade-off is that the output impedance will be pretty high if you do. Uh, but we'll come back to that later. There's, there's some ways around it. Um, now the output of this gain stage drives the crystal filter. 
scroll over here and see that. The crystals are from CTS. They're part number uh, MP101. They're marked for 10 megahertz with uh, 30 picofarads in parallel, which means the real series resonant frequency is lower. I measured it at 9.997 megahertz. Now that's good because for this filter topology, the pass band is pretty much all above the series resonant frequency. Um, so having that series resonant frequency be below 10 megahertz, you end up with the 10 megahertz carrier in the pass band. It's not quite centered up, but it's in there and it'll work. So this is, this is uh, sort of a, another coupled resonator filter. Uh, this time though, the resonators, being the crystals, are in series and the coupling reactances are in shunt. Um, the, another wrinkle is that the resonators, these crystals, have two resonant frequencies. Um, so like the simplest model for a crystal is an inductance in series with a capacitance and that models like the mechanical stuff that happens in the crystal. So you know at some frequency it's resonant and it presents a low impedance. Um, now in parallel with that is the static capacitance and that comes from the electrodes that are deposited onto the crystal, the case, stuff like that. Uh, so you've got three reactances that you can't reduce. So you end up with two different resonant frequencies. Um, there's the resonant and the anti-resonant frequency so that you got low impedance and high impedance. So as a result of that, this filter is asymmetric. Now for this application, it's no big deal, but it is great for removing an unwanted sideband if you have one. Uh, and that's where the topology gets its name from. It's called a lower sideband crystal filter. So next the signal goes into this bootstrapped voltage follower um, to buffer the output. Now usually with a voltage follower like this, the input impedance is dominated by the bias resistors, these guys here. Uh, which is a disappointment because as you reduce the emitter resistor, R10 here, uh, to make the output impedance lower, you would have to reduce this R7 and R8 uh, to get a stiff bias voltage and get the input, and the input impedance would go down. So it's like a catch-22. What you could do is bootstrap it. So you feed back the output through this capacitor here. That superimposes the output on the bias voltage. And so at DC, the input impedance is still dominated by the bias divider. But at signal frequencies, there's very little voltage drop across R9 here. Um, so it looks like a large input impedance because small voltage drop, small amount of current, looks like a big impedance. Um, how big? Really big. Uh, you can figure it out. You need to know a little bit about the transistor. And you can analyze it, but I think it's something on the order of 100 times your emitter resistor. So big. Uh, let's come back to that CAS code then. Uh, this is one way you can get around the high output impedance. You could put a bootstrap voltage to follower after it. Uh, with that combination you get high input impedance, low output impedance, good reverse isolation, and lots of gain. I mean what else do you even want? So let's go down here and we'll see it in action. Here's a CAS code gain stage made with BJTs, two of them this time. Uh, then a voltage follower here and then there's another cast code and another voltage follower. So you got two stages, two gain stages. 35 decibels each. So I got what I asked for. I got a narrow filter, I got lots of gain, and now it's time to send it off to the scope. And that's what this jack is here. Now at the last minute I thought I better have audio output. Mostly because it would be good for the video but also because the crystal filter rings like a bell. I chose to design the crystal filter with a Chebyshev response because of the steep skirts, but what I wasn't thinking about is the impulse response, which is just tragic. Even with just noise input, the output looks like a pretty believable 10 MHz sine wave on the scope, and so it's nice to hear the ticking and know you're actually hearing signal and not just the filter ringing. Now, since I whacked it on at the end, it's a bit uncivilized. It's just a diode detector here, 
a forward bias to improve the sensitivity, and then a low pass filter. Between that crudeness and the fact that the filter is a bit narrow and off center, the audio quality is shockingly bad, and I hope you'll excuse it. Let's pop the lid off. So it's just a one-off. I built it on a solid piece of copper clad, which acts as the ground plane. The circuit zigzags back and forth, and these vertical pieces here help isolate these, these sections, so it seems more like it's just one long, thin strip of circuit. Here's the input from the antenna. It goes right into the uh, pre-selector filter. These toroids are hand-wound and fixed with some polystyrene cement I made. I did a video about that. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description. Now here's that first cast code with the JFET and the BJT. Uh, maybe you can see in there there's some um, ferrite beads. Uh, you know, I didn't do any analysis to figure out exactly where I needed them and where I could get away without them. It's, you know, it's a one-off, so I put them where I thought they might help and basically worked out. It was a little fiddly building the thing though. Um, it actually worked okay on the first try uh, when I built it until I put the lid on the case. Uh, I finally got that figured out after thinking pretty carefully about the grounding. Um, and I, th I think I also ended up adding some power supply decoupling that's not in the schematic. Anyway, after the, the little cast code, it goes into the crystal filter up here. That's these guys. Um, I just solder them upside down to the to the ground plane. It does make a little difference the how you model the static capacitance, um, whether the the case is grounded or not. Um, these of course are grounded. Here's all that lovely gain. Uh, there's a voltage follower that buffers the output of the crystal oscillator, but then you got that first cascode, the uh, first voltage follower, second cascode, and the second voltage follower. They like say it came out to about 70 dB. Um, it gave me less trouble to build than I expected. I was actually able to prototype one stage of it on solderless breadboard, uh, but two was too many. And of course the gain was lower than what I designed or how it came out here. Um, but you can do more with that solderless breadboard than what you might think. Uh, you do have to be thoughtful about stray reactances, uh, but there's some tricks for that. Um, anyway, let's uh, keep moving on here. So. Here's where the scope output taps off and comes to this uh, jack here. And then this, this kind of scraggly mess is that detector. Um, and then you got the audio output comes here. I got everything set up. Um, got the output from the oscillator in the uh, frequency counter here going to channel one and I'm figuring on that. <clears throat> and then I got the output from the receiver going into channel two. Had the receiver hooked up to the antenna and a uh, little amplified speaker so we can hear what's going on. And uh, you can see I, I misadjusted it just so we'd have something to do. And so you can see the um, output from the receivers not uh, at quite the same frequency as the oscillator in there. So, you know, you can see it roll against it. If we triggered on the other, it'd, you know, vice versa. Um, but triggering on this signal, it's, it's not as noisy, so it's easier to see what's going on. So let's uh, take the swizzle stick to it, get the tongue at the right angle, and see what we can do. All right, let's see what we can get here. The signal kind of comes and goes this time of day. That looks pretty good. Well, it looks like it's all set. Appreciate you watching the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Uh, if this is the kind of thing you're into, hit the subscribe button. Should be more like it.